I was the first one to actually see that um, her development was not moving along. So it was actually around a year of age when we thought her development was slowing down. And then it was later on when she was 18 months when she started having seizures. When we first got the diagnosis, the first thing we saw online was that there was no approved therapies or treatments for GM1, which was heartbreaking. It's a neurodegenerative condition that is progressive uh, and there's no known therapies or cures for it right now. So due to Violet's condition, she does have a lot of difficulty with her mo motor movements and a lot of her neurologic development. So a lot of her physical therapies and occupational therapies are based on motor control, um, both gross motor and fine motor skills. GM1 has caused uh, regression in her skills. So when she was uh, about six months old, she was able to sit up with um, some support. Uh, she was scooting around, um, not quite crawling, um, but she was getting there. But um, after about a year old, that started to go away. Uh, so we're at that point where she does need support uh, in every aspect. She's a sweet child. Um, she really is. And, you know, knowing myself and my wife, I know that she just wants to be out there and be a part of the world. So Violet is kind of like her dad. Um, she is pretty feisty. She's very stubborn and she will let you know that she wants something in a certain way. Despite her neurologic and uh, medical debilities, there's still a person inside there who is also still growing and experiencing the world. So one thing as a doctor I found is, that's gone through this experience is how much of it relies on us to remove roadblocks, to advocate, to provide funding and research so that these therapies can be pushed through. Once you get over that hump, I think there's a lot of potential for a lot of great breakthroughs, especially in this day and age. So uh, our goal would be to get more support and funding and especially awareness uh, of this cause. When you're in medical training, they tell you to try to separate your personal life from your professional life. Um, and in this case, it has all come together as one. I think a lot of times we're so obsessed with how long a person can live that we forget about the quality of that life. And I think uh, as we've gone through this journey, part of our change of mindset has been to realize that, you know what, maybe the therapies might not be a quote-unquote cure, but maybe they can improve quality of life and make her more amenable to uh, enjoying these experiences around her. And there's always hope. So even the, the small contribution to the GM1 Foundation is going to go a long way and it's hope that you're giving us as families uh, affected by GM1 and we have to, to keep working to maybe possibly cure it.